Looks like the brahmacharis have been out in the sun. You're all a little sunburned and bright-faced. Good sign. Lots of Harinam and book distribution and maybe some swimming at the beach too. So, this is the first of a series of classes conducted during our North American GBC and other leaders um, meeting. I chose this topic for a number of reasons. Um, it started with thinking about a, a verse from uh, Kapila Dave's teachings to Devahuti. Some of you maybe know and don't know who Lord Kapila Dave is. He's a, an incarnation of the personality of Godhead, described in Third Canto Bhagavatam. Long section in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, and of course, the essence of his teachings is devotional service, pure devotional service, because he's an incarnation of the personality of Godhead. He's um, known specifically for his teachings of Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya philosophy is also in Bhagavad Gita, in the second chapter, the first series of verses describing the soul and distinction between the soul and matter, that's Sankhya philosophy. In any case, Kapila Dev essentially taught about devotional service. The purpose behind that discernment between matter and spirit, ultimately, skipping many steps, is to come to the position of exclusive shelter in the personality of Godhead. And one who takes exclusive shelter in the personality of Godhead manifests certain bhushanas, Sanskrit phrases there, sadhu bhushana. And bhushana means ornament. Ornaments decorate a sadhu. Naturally, Krishna is the decorator, and he decorates his dear devotees with very nice qualities. So a, de a devotee, aspiring devotee, um, is pleased to be honored by Krishna, to be decorated by Krishna with exalted qualities. And Krishna is happy to see his devotees decorated by exalted qualities. You know that section from chapter 12 of Bhagavad Gita, it's also devotional service. At the end of the chapter, the last several verses, Krishna describes a devotee who has these qualities, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. He's very dear to me. And then the devotee that has this quality and this quality, this, he's very dear to me. Now, where did the devotee get those qualities? from the person who considers that devotee very dear to him. He decorates and then is very pleased when the devotee comes before Krishna with those nice qualities. <laughs> it's a loving exchange, developing the, the ornaments of Vaishnava etiquette. It's not just a matter of obedience and, and behavior. It's a, an exhibition of consciousness, of devotion to Krishna, and Krishna decorates. So, um, leaders, this is a gathering, is a gr gathering of some of the persons in North America, U.S. and Canada, coming here, who are carrying a big responsibility to um, try, according to the capacity that Krishna gives, to discern um, what it is that our founder Acharya would like in so many circumstances. 
and give leadership to um, making that which will please our founder Acharya and thereby please Krishna manifest in this world. That's a big responsibility. But it's not, again, it's not just a matter, this was my meditation on picking this topic. It's not just a matter of uh, making good decisions and, and working together to try to make those good decisions happen. That's important. But at the same time, the gesture of wishing to offer something to Krishna and being decorated by the ornament of fine quality, fine character, that's especially important because that's an indication that Krishna is pleased and the other is not the same. And to be a good leader, Prabhupada taught, is to be a good follower. And a good follower is one who takes the indication of the leader, takes the indication of our founder Acharya as their life and soul. And then it becomes really interesting because different people have different ideas of what the founder Acharya wanted. Someone says this and they have their citations of, just see, Prabhupada said this. And others say, well, wait a minute, Prabhupada wanted that and he said that. We all have that experience. So in, in sorting our way through, through those situations, we certainly cannot abandon Vaishnava etiquette in order to establish this or that as superior. We can't abandon Vaishnava etiquette. Krishna will not be pleased. So it's with some of those thoughts that I wanted to speak on this topic. Vaishnava etiquette, the refined ornament of a leader and a follower. Um, we'll start with a reference from Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami was the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita which Srila Prabhupada translated from Bengali into English. And a very elevated uh, topic, the life of Lord Chaitanya and his teachings. And in one section, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is describing Lord Chaitanya's instructions to Sanatana Goswami. And again, there may be some new people here. So Sanatana, Goswami was one of the, the principal, six principal associates of Lord Chaitanya who resided in Vrindavan and carried forward his mission. Again, a, a, a great leadership role, but very qualified persons. And they took the instructions of Lord Chaitanya to heart. And here's one of those instructions. Um, Shamaya Sadachar Ara Vaishnava Achar. This is so Sadachar. Sadachar means good behavior, as you see in the word for word. Um, he, he, Lord Chaitanya is instructing Sanatan Goswami to write about the good behavior of devotees of the Lord. In general, samanya, and specifically in details, things which are to be done, things which are not to be done. And under the authority of scripture, not creatively imagining or conventionally accepting, but on the authority of scripture. You should give general and specific descriptions of the behavior and activities of a Vaishnava. You should outline things 
that are to be done and things that are not to be done. All this should be described as regulations and etiquette. Now, the, the result of this was Hari Bhakti Vilas, which um, Sanatana Goswami authored, and Gopal Bhatta Goswami was a major contributor to that work, but it bears the name of Sanatana Goswami for the, the compilation itself. Um, and we have uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas references writings. It gathers, it collects it together just that we, as we read at the beginning that wonderful verse from Sad Goswami Astaka in glorification of the six Goswamis. We sing it or recite it in relation to Rupa Goswami, but it equally applies to all of them. Nana Shastra Vachara Naika Nipyano Sad Dharma Sangsthapako. The six Goswamis studied all the revealed scriptures and gather together the essence of those principles and all the revealed scriptures and presented them in a very simple manner accessible for all of us and he did so Sanatana Goswami did so under the direct instruction of Lord Chaitanya to do so so he's our Acharya he's our teacher by example in this matter of um, Vaishnav etiquette. In uh, one place within Srimad Bhagavatam, seventh canto, Prabhupada describes a little bit this um, etiquette of a Vaishnav. He, he indicates one should live among devotees, saintly persons, to learn the etiquette and proper behavior of devotional service. Actually, a sadhu, a saintly person, must be saintly in his behavior. Sadhava, sadachar. Again, there's this word sadachar. Unless one adheres to standard behavior, one's position as a sadhu, a saintly person, is not complete. Therefore, a Vaishnava, a sadhu, must completely adhere to the standard of behavior. So this is broadening the, the, the sense of what a sadhu is, commonly someone who is referred to as a sadhu is um, perhaps a sannyasi or a very, very mature, spiritually elevated, highly spiritually elevated person that's a sadhu. And Prabhupada is not only in this place, in many places, indicating that each of us are to become like that. To become a Vaishnava, that means we're, we're representatives of disciplic succession and we're to represent, in representing, we're to conduct ourselves in a proper manner. Very similar to how Krishna is persuading Arjuna to remember the, the great ancestry from which he comes and, you know, live up to it. Don't behave in a lesser manner. It's unbecoming of the great line that you have come from. You'll tarnish the name of your predecessor kings and uh, the line of your great exalted family. That's an argument Krishna gives to Arjuna. And similarly, that applies to us. We've come from whatever the background we've come from, and now we're living our lives as devotees of the Lord, and we're to completely adhere to the standard of behavior for such persons. That's part of our duty. Not only getting things done or achieving something but exhibiting proper conduct and character. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti 
Thakur says that a Vaishnava, a person initiated into the Vaishnava cult, should be offered the respect befitting a Vaishnava, which means that it should be offered service and prayers. However, one should not associate with him if he is not a fit person with whom to associate. This is an example of etiquette. It's not just a cosmetic Haribo Prabhu. It's recognizing here's a person because they're duly initiated, they're to be um, offered respect, befitting someone of that position, offering of services and prayers. At the same time, another etiquette item, especially for Madhyama, Adhikaris, those of us that are being trained in the Hare Krishna movement to become the in, in, intermediate stage of Vaishnava, practicing um, in the line of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we choose to intimately associate with those that have uh, good etiquette and by that association it strengthens our quality of good etiquette so we should be that good association for others and we should be discriminating those that are not holding such good etiquette we don't intimately associate with them and now here comes a, some really small letters sorry about that it fills up the page there's um, a section mentioned here of Hari Bhakti Vilas which describes this Vaishnava etiquette. Um, here's how Hari Bhakti Vilas defines Vaishnava etiquette. This is the series of quotes taken directly from Hari Bhakti Vilas. Since nothing can be successful without sadachar or etiquette, every action should be performed with proper etiquette. The heart of a saintly person is free from contamination. The way a saintly person acts is known as proper etiquette or sadachar. You could say it's just saying the same thing in reverse. By, by quality and character, a devotee behaves with proper etiquette. And then the converse, the proper etiquette is determined, defined by those who are saintly, hearts free from contamination. What that means is if the heart is conflicted with contamination, then proper etiquette cannot and will not be exhibited. If a person reads the six branches of the Vedas without practicing proper etiquette, he does not get purified. Just as a bird flies away from the nest as soon as it grows wings, the Vedas leave him at the time of death. You know, to, to no avail. It won't carry him to a higher position if, despite so much study, Vaishnava etiquette is missing. Although one may have acquired the knowledge of all the Vedas. But if one is not practicing the proper etiquette, or if he did not become a Vaishnava, then all this knowledge which he has acquired will be lost at the time of death. In other words, it's material. It's, it, it doesn't become elevated to the spiritual platform, nor does it knowledge alone elevate one to the spiritual platform it's insufficient proper etiquette increases fame opulence longevity and destroys all inauspiciousness and finally O king proper etiquette gives the results of dharma artha and kama therefore a wise man very carefully performs the proper etiquette described in the scriptures. Actually, there's one more line. So these are all quotes taken from Hari Bhakti Vilas where 
what etiquette is, how it is to be achieved, the benefits that come from it are presented. Thus one can understand that Vaishnava etiquette purifies the heart and the consciousness. One of the teachings of Lord Kapila to his mother Devahuti is that devotional service in the mode of goodness is where the motivation of the performer is they wish to become purified. No, the, the, the purification that results is unalloyed devotional service and that has a whole other description. Unflinchingly, un, 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 without, even without purpose or intent, when there is hearing of the topics of Krishna, one's mind just goes there. Like the river flowing downstream during rainy season. Just rushes downstream. The mind just flows or flies to the topics of Krishna or to Krishna's holy name. But prior to that is the, the purification process in the mode of goodness. I wish to become purified. I'm taking up these activities because I know that they will purify me. So the activity of the etiquette is something that will also, we're being instructed here in Hari Bhakti Vilas, it will help to purify us spiritually. Um, one often quoted verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam that speaks about the, the good qualities by which a devotee uh, is to be known. This yasyasti bhaktir bhagavata kinjana sair vair ganais tatra samasatesara harava bhaktasya kuto mahadguna manorate nasati dhavato bahi. So I put in different colored letters these terms sair vair guna. That's all good qualities. All good qualities become the decorations of one who has bhaktir bhavati, bhaktir, yeah, bhaktir bhagavati akinchana, unmotivated devotional service. Here is the translation. All the demigods and their exalted qualities such as religion, knowledge, and renunciation become manifest in the body of one who has developed unalloyed devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev. So if you want good qualities, if you want to have this um, feature of Vaishnav etiquette, the prerequisite, the, the, the impetus for that to happen is uh, unmotivated devotional service. Akinchana bhakti. And the converse is harav abhaktasya, those that don't have that devotion will not have good qualities. Why? Um, even if he is adept in the practice of mystic yoga, or the honest endeavor of maintaining his family and relatives. He must be driven by his own mental speculations and must engage in the service of the Lord's external energy. How can there be any good qualities in such a man? Harab Abhaktasya. So, Hari, Bhakti, devotion to the Lord Hari and Hari Abhaktasya, those that don't have devotion to Hari, will not have good qualities because they're manoratena. Prabhupada would refer to that verse just standing alone. They're riding on the chariot of the mind. Their conceptions of life remain conceptions only. Bhakti has to go beyond a, 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 a theoretical or notional or conceptual, conceptual uh, way of life. It's 
dedication of oneself and in turn one's body and one's mind and one's words to the personality of Godhead service unto such a person the good qualities uh, become their ornament um, a similar idea is found in Bhagavad Gita some of you are familiar with this section I'm sure where chapter 13 of Bhagavad Gita there are six questions again it's a Sankhya section where uh, knowledge and the object of knowledge uh, material nature and the enjoyer of material nature Purusha and Prakriti Ganam and Gayam so in that, in that um, oh I've got this wrong it's not 8 through 10 it's 6 through 7 this is Maichananya Yogina Bhaktir Avya Bicharini in the first part of the purport Prabhupada um, remarks that this one feature, Mai Chananya Yogena Bhaktir Avya Bicharini, exclusive devotion to the personality of Godhead is the prerequisite or the impetus for all other good items of knowledge to be uh, within one's character. And one can get the one on top if one has acharya upasana one takes shelter of and engages in the worship of the acharya and from those two all the others follow when, when I was thinking about how to prepare for this topic it's, it's a vast topic um, there, there are courses taught in Vrindavan Vaishnav etiquette course that lasts for a month <laughs> and uh, Bhakti Chiru Swami has written a, because he's given the course so many times he's written a book it's just based upon his classes that last for a month so I, how, to, how to capsulize this message in one short class so this is not an, you know, this is not a, an exhaustive comprehensive presentation on the topic it's I'm, I'm attempting here to just give some principles upon which the exhibition of Vaishnava etiquette rests. We need to know what Vaishnav, what is and what is not, what is to be done, what is not to be done in terms of etiquette. But we may have a nice set of lists of things, but without, without these principles, they're not going to manifest. It's important for us to know what etiquettes are. It's superlatively important that these characteristics of pure devotion are manifest. And one is the entryway into the Mai Chananya Yogena Bhaktir Avya Bicharini. Avya Bichari Bhakti is a strong term. Unmixed, undivided. The other term was a Kinchana unmotivated devotional service nothing other than the interest of Krishna is within the heart of such a devotee and then all the other good characteristics will naturally manifest um, this topic I'm gonna um, go another direction but it, it ends up in the same place Balade Vidyabhusan has um, written some comment on this topic in terms of the Bhagavad Gita and the topic of knowing Krishna so it, it covers 726, 727 and 728 Mam Tu Veda Nakashchana is how the verse 76 enter, ends me nobody knows so Baladev raises the question really no one knows Krishna even among millions of jnanis
one who knows Krishna is very rare and is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam. Muktanam Siddhanam Narayana Parayana The position of Narayana Parayana, the unalloyed devotion, in short, is rare to find even amongst those who are liberated, those who are in the position of spiritual perfection. It's rare to find one who is a pure devotee. Because there are different paths of liberation. One of the paths of liberation is the path of jnana. And amongst many, many jnanis, those who may become even very, very expert, even perfect in that process of jnana, it's very rare to find one who is a pure devotee of the Lord. So Baladev plays the position of a skeptic. Why is it that the person who knows Krishna is very rare? And he points to the next verse, 727. Icha dvesha samutena dvandva mohena bharata sarva bhutani sammoham sarge yanti param tapa. Since the beginning of creation, all living beings have been intensely bewildered by ignorance caused by duality arising from like and dislike continuing from previous lives so that's a long time since the beginning of time since the beginning of creation intensely bewildered so again the, the doubting voice Baladei presents really from the very beginning of creation all living entities become completely bewildered? Why? And the answer is there. They're bewildered by the illusions of dualities concerning respect and disrespect, happiness and distress, woman and man, thinking, if I am treated well, I will be happy. If I am treated with disrespect, I will feel sad. This is my wife. This is my husband. Absorbed in such illusory conceptions, they become bewildered. What causes this intense bewilderment? This is the dialogue within Baladev's commentary. The bewilderment arises in this life by impressions from attachment and hatred which existed in previous lives. Icha Devesha Samutena. Since all living beings are bewildered in this way, one who knows me is very rare. So the point is our awareness of Krishna, our seeing Krishna, our knowing Krishna, our sense of being connected to Krishna is blocked by our own contaminations of heart, our own desires and hates and attractions and repulsions and you know the worldly sensibility of duality that affects us very strongly. And in, in that condition, in that materially affected condition one can't see Krishna one can't see uh, the way of a life of devotion and certainly the characteristics then of Vaishnava etiquette are not going to be decorating one so then comes the next doubt it appears that no one will manifest devotion to you at all from your statement in the last verse since every living being is bewildered like we're condemned
then those who have attained destruction of their sins antakatam papam through the fortunate merciful glance of that of the great souls those who have performed pleasing actions punya karmanam which gained the mercy of the great souls worship me with steadiness dridhavrata attained by association with great souls they being freed from the illusion of dualities having attained true knowledge of me worship me so there's there's a solution to the dilemma and that's the association of uh, those who are dridhavrata those who are great souls who have great determination steadiness in their devotion in all circumstances of life then one can go beyond this icha dvesha that comes from the very beginning of creation and stays with us lifetime and after lifetime and blocks us from seeing light and truth regarding the role of great devotees the smriti says vishnu or bhutan bhutani bhutanam pavanaya charantihi the servants of vishnu wander about in this world in order to purify the living entities from the 11th canto shrimad bhagavatam in the same message is there in bhakti vinod thakur's writing in um bhakti loka this is the six items that enhance bhakti and one of them is to give up unholy association he calls this tyaga of unwholesome association ancient prejudices it's the same message as B- baladev's these ancient prejudices essentially it's each a devesha continued into this lifetime from previous lifetime prejudices that have developed in the subtle body due to the immemorial endeavors for fruitive activity and speculative knowledge karma and gyan such prejudices are known as one's nature from these one develops association with karma and gyan in this life this is inevitable it's it's the, the wheel of time moving the soul along in the sojourn of birth and death attaching the soul to bewildering conditions of life ancient prejudices interesting way to describe it recent prejudices are attachments for good and bad attained in this life due to association so the recommendation obviously of bhakti is to go beyond both prejudices doesn't have a good connotation to it although in one sense he's saying it's one's nature so we have to go beyond or above transcend our nature into this other higher realm which is accessible through um the association of saintly persons the same idea is spoken about by jiva goswami in his bhakti sandarbha this akinchan of bhakti it's the rarest of attainments and the results are also the rarest this um devotion that's not dependent upon circumstance not created by circumstance not destroyed by circumstance it stands alone independent of circumstance and then similarly vaishnav etiquette the the ornaments of a saintly person a vaishnav as a saintly person where the characteristics and qualities of that saintly person are not created by circumstance or destroyed by circumstance they stand above the circumstance that's the spiritual platform and um 
Jiva Goswami makes reference to the discussion in the third canto between Vidura and Maitreya. Vidura is asking questions to Maitreya. And the statement is there, auspicious devotees of Lord Krishna, like you, wander in this material world simply to bless people who, due to misfortune, are not devoted to Lord Krishna and who are thus irreligious and exceedingly miserable. Um, the comment in the purport given by Jiva Goswami is in this verse the adverb daivat or by misfortune means that they are not devoted to the Lord because of their past karma. Again, this is the, the, the absence of bhakti in, in our life and, and, and then in turn the absence of Vaishnava etiquette or the ornaments of a Vaishnava will be absent by misfortune. Our past attractions and repulsions of material existence. It's bound to happen. It's just how the material world works. So, due to their absorption in such karma, they are adharma shila or irreligious, which means that they are devoid of bhagavat dharma or bhakti. The solution? Same. Only by the mercy, this is uh, Jiva Goswami's conclusion from Bhakti Sandarva. Only by the mercy of Guru can the absorption in desire and hate, which block our capacity to know the Lord, be broken. And that's the end of the presentation. The successful attainment or manifesting of Vaishnava etiquette, it's resting upon the spiritual foundation. And without a strong foundation, attempts to manifest good etiquette, they're appreciated, but they're not going to endure without the proper foundation. And conversely, when the proper foundation is there, very naturally, Krishna decorates that devotee, and the devotee eagerly uh, accepts or adopts a life of, of etiquette. You know, a, a classic example of so many that come to mind, one of them is Magari, the hunter. Prabhupada liked to refer to his condition because in one sense the, 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 the audience that he was dealing with, the Western audience, was totally without culture in so many ways. Not literally having the occupation of hunters like Magari, but doing so many um, abominable activities and activities that are hurtful to others without even thinking about it. The, the, the rapid rate of, despite so many health concerns that people have, the, the, the um, it's astonishing, the traveling and seeing McDonald's in all corners of China. <laughs> I mean, remember the first time I saw McDonald's in the Delhi airport? I was shocked. Right in the, right in the departure lounge of the domestic terminal in Delhi. McDonald's. And how can people do that? Especially when, especially when there's, you know, the, 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 the history of proper culture. Anyway, without giving so many examples. Um, the, the, the finer sentiments are, are rapidly being destroyed. All over the world. And when one sees that happening, you know, whether it's in the name of religion or whether it's the name of material prosperity, whatever the name is given, 
finer sentiments are being destroyed. Rampantly, wantonly, it's, it's, it's shocking, it's repulsive. And so take, having such an audience to, to deal with, like when Prabhupada came to America, how are these people going to understand the message of pure goodness? where their lives are filled with ignorance and passion. That was his um, address when he was still on the Jaladuta and wrote this poem. And this poem that he wrote, I remember sitting in a couple of classes and Prabhupada remembered the, the words of those um, prayers to Krishna and recited them and gave the explanation. In other words, it was something that was not just a passing little expression, it was something that was it meant a lot to him. The, the appeal to Krishna for the empowerment to make the message of transcendence transmitted properly to people who are so deeply influenced by ignorance and passion. So he would refer to this Magari, the hunter story, at least I took it, in a similar manner. And after Magari became under the association and care of Narada Muni, he who before his life was giving pain to animals and that was his happiness was unwilling to even give pain to an ant. With great care he would with his cloth brush the ants to the side so we can go and greet his spiritual master Narada Muni when he came to visit him. Good qualities naturally develop within um, a Vaishnava. And how can one become a Vaishnava if we're so covered in Icha and Dvesha? By the association of devotees. And that's what we're supposed to be conduits of as members of the Hare Krishna movement when we go and here and there on Hare Nama or book distribution or conducting programs or just moving about within society, carrying devotion within our heart and, and giving that association to others. It's, in part, it's the character or quality that we carry. Starts from the, the quality of devotion within, that we carry within our heart, and then in all of our words and um, speech and actions, just becomes our whole being. And it's powerful. It purifies us, that's powerful, and just by Vaishnav etiquette, it's appealing and attractive to others. It will help those persons take some, some further appreciation of a life of devotion or the way of a life of devotion. So those are just some thoughts on the topic of Vaishnav etiquette as the um, refined ornament of leaders and of followers. It's a vast topic. I uh, took some list directly from, since it's been passed out, rather than going through the items, put it on the screen and recite them and describe them, I thought I'd just pass them out. And these are items to be considered in the course of conducting our lives. They're, they're details. Again, what, what Lord Chaitanya requested of Sanatana or instructed Sanatana was in general and in specific ways. Many of these are very specifics. Especially important is the etiquette of how we interact with Vaishnavas. With, with due respect according to the position of that Vaishnava. It's an essential item of etiquette. And missing, if that's missing, then it's one of the first offenses against the chanting of the Holy Name. Not to have proper regard and respect for the devotees of the Lord.
Okay, so any comments or questions? Anyone out here in the audience? Hare Krishna Maharaj. On the one hand, we hear that bhakti um, naturally ornaments one with various qualities that, that are attractive. On the other hand, we hear about the need of proper sadhachar to get that bhakti or to be properly situated in bhakti. So it seems like a, 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 a catch-22. Well, the, the second one is... I like to describe it this way. There's the cart and there's the horse. And it's meant that the horse pulls the cart, not the cart pulls the horse. So the horse is bhakti, is this desire in simple terms to please Krishna. And, and the most important thing in our cultivation of Krishna consciousness is the awakening of that seed desire and maturing of that seed desire to please Krishna with whatever it is that we do and our, our very being. And as, on, on the strength of that, that's the horse, comes the next part, which is I wish to progress further in the life of devotion to Krishna. I wish further that my existence in the presence of Krishna is more and more pleasing. And so then comes the cart, the cultivation of being aware of items of etiquette and applying myself to those items of etiquette. Why? The horse. Because it's pleasing to Krishna. And if the pleasing to Krishna part isn't pulling the cart, then um, those qualities are not going to in a sustainable, you know, genuine manner, manifest themselves. So the second part of how people sometimes think, I need the Vaishnava etiquette items in order to be properly situated in devotional service. If we keep the perspective proper, it, you know, the, the objective is not how I am situated, but rather pleasing Krishna. That's, I, for me, that, that, that takes care of, that, that it's not really a dilemma. It's the first thing first, and keep the first things always in the first place. And then other things follow the first one. It's like, another way of saying the same thing, that there's 26 qualities of a devotee, and of those 26, one is principal, or Swarup Lakshana, and the other 25 are Tatashta Lakshana. So the, the Swarup Lakshana is Krishna e Kasharana, surrender unto Krishna, same as this Mai Chanan Yogina Bhaktira Vyavicharini. Same, the language is different, the principle is the same. Krishna is to be pleased, that's Bhakti. And when Krishna is to be pleased, then we want to be pleasing to Krishna because that's what we want, is that Krishna is pleased. Then the other things follow. And that will enhance, it'll help me advance further in devotion to Krishna, it'll help me purify my existence and please Krishna further. Yes? In this slide and in the previous slides, there's the reference to one's nature or that uh, one is driven by desire and hate or like and dislike. In the, so on the one hand, uh, we act from our nature and that and feels real, that feels uh, natural in one sense. Mm -hmm. 
And then we are asked to, or when we hear uh, classes like these, then we have to consider acting uh, or, or taking a higher road, if you will. And it seems a little artificial or unnatural. And we somehow feel, I'd rather be honest and real than try to be artificial and unreal. It doesn't fit me. I cannot say, okay, Prabhu, please forgive me when I don't feel it that way or I may be wrong or and, it, it's, and I'm asked or I feel uh, I'm taking the position of a person with likes and dislikes. I feel being honest is much far better in situations that I'm facing. So how do I or what is it um, that as a practicing devotee, I need to consider to take that higher road. The question that you're raising was the theme of one of our retreats in Gita Nagari, which was inspired by Jai Jagannath, the acceptance and progress. It's not merely acceptance, it's acceptance and progress. <laughs> One has to look to the next stage, otherwise we're stuck. We're not going to progress. So we should have, we should introspect and in various other ways uh, through advice and guidance of those who are close to us and our superiors, both what's our nature and recognize what our nature is and not be pretentious about what we aren't be honest with what we are, at the same time then move in the, with proper shelter and in, in uh, manageable, sustainable steps towards the higher position. And the high, that, that becomes made, it's made possible by shelter and instructions and spiritual strength beyond our own quote unquote nature. And if one isn't prepared to go beyond one's conditioned position, then th that person is not going to spiritually progress. So it should, should not be imitation of very elevated persons beyond my capacity. At the same time, there needs to be steps in direction. I mean, it's, 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 it's like something very simple is when somebody begins chanting. We encourage you, you know, chant one or two or a few rounds, then not right away go to some very high number of rounds. But do some, whatever it is that you can do every day. Do something every day, as an example. And then, then that's, that's our cultivation, that's our progress. We're taking shelter of a higher principle than just my nature. And that cultivation under guidance leads to elevation. You have to be prepared for elevation or there's no spiritual progress. Go back to the other side, we don't want to pretend we're something that we're not. At the same time, that just you take that example of say, Jee Prabhu, I'm sorry. I mean, that's something that children learn. If they do something that causes some uh, inconvenience or suffering or unhappiness to others parents teach their children all the time to say I'm sorry you apologize but what if I don't feel it well apologize anyway because it's it'll, it'll elevate you it is to be done that's the mode of goodness besides the you know, lower nature it's the mode of goodness it will elevate you And then by that practice of those activities that will elevate you, then it becomes, in that elevated state, it becomes more natural to say and, and feel, I'm sorry. And then, you know, with that deeper feeling of I'm sorry, then we'll let it not happen again. Because, it, you know, lower nature will prevail unless we have some higher shelter.
that's the principle of, of bhakti. We're not dependent upon our own limitations. Mukunda, you have something? Hare Krishna. Um, in relation to the, the first question, Jai Jagannaprabhu's, this, the summary point that you made was that um, by acting in such a way that's pleasing to Krishna with that in focus, what will be pleasing to Krishna, then etiquette will come. Is that well, correct? It, it's, not, it's not just that etiquette will come, but our aspiration, let's say, um, I have an anger problem. So I could just work on my anger problem. But first comes, let my life be in principle pleasing to Krishna. Now that's something that's not pleasing to Krishna. Then I look to Krishna for help to overcome the anger problem, not just so I can like conquer my lower nature, but it's so I can be pleasing to Krishna. Then it becomes conquered. Otherwise, it's just managing a problem instead of overcoming the problem, transcending the problem. Does that address your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I cut you off before you got to ask your question. I'm sorry. Can I just can I just reiterate what you said, and you can tell me if it's right or not? Okay. Um, so you were saying like if somebody has an anger problem, then they would approach Krishna, not just saying, Krishna, can you please get rid of my anger problem, but you would, you would approach with the attitude of, Krishna, please help me get rid of this anger problem so that I can serve you nicely. Yeah. That's but, the idea. So you'll be pleased with me. Okay. I come before you dirty. I know that I'm not clean. My heart is not clean. And one of the features of this lack of being clean is that one. I've got some other ones too, but that anger one. And I've struggled with it, supposing that somebody that has an anger problem has struggled with it. They recognize it and they know it's, they know it's not clean. It, it's impure. Contamination. So, the, 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 in, in that case, for one who is aspiring for pure devotion, they're seeking the shelter of Krishna to be more clean or more in a more pure state so Krishna will be pleased with them but I'm, I'm depending upon you for this limitation that I have so that I can be pleasing to you now there's other kinds of motivations that somebody you know so that I'll be appreciated by my peers more or I'll feel a sense of victory I you know I conquered over anger or something I did it doership It's it. So that that's just one example. Uh, the question I was going to ask was a little bit on a different line, but that was a thank you for that clarification. Okay. Um, but I, I was actually I was just thinking like, uh, so if somebody's somebody one person maybe there's two people both are acting they're both acting for the pleasure of Krishna in their own respect, and then one maybe thinking that I'm going to act for the pleasure of Krishna by doing a particular type of service, whether it's like hearing or chanting, focusing on something like that. And then a different person may be focusing, also wanting to act for Krishna's pleasure, but thinking that I'm going to do it by doing physical services, whatever it may be. And then if there's a conflict of interest, but they're both individually feel like they're acting for the pleasure of Krishna, very common phenomena. Yeah. Okay, so now what's, what's, what's the punchline of the question? I guess what to do because they both feel like they're respectively acting for the They feel the justified of by their actions and they'll give you an explanation why, what's the justification for their actions and why this is. So it sounds like a uni unity in diversity question. Meaning. By that I mean, um, 
We're individual. It would be pretty bo boring if, you know, if, if the, the flower garden uh, or, or a vase of flowers only had one color of one type of and all the same size. Well, it wouldn't be exactly boring, but it's not, you know, there's diversity. It's just, that's how things are. That's Krishna's creation. So some have this and some have that nature and this inclination and that preference and that's just natural. So it doesn't have to be discord or disharmony. It can be appreciation of diversity. And then the unity principle is for Krishna. And then the unity principle of, for Krishna will be demonstrated by their mutual respect. And then, you know, within, within a society that there is a willingness to, to um, honor the needs of, of the society. And I'm not going to, I don't know, make a big clamor and noise over here that, you know, my particular type of inclination is what everybody else should be doing. Or and I won't do anything else but this one. You know, there's, there's so, those social concerns and, and, you know, circumstances in which I, I live. I'm, I'm part of something bigger than just my own little bubble. And let me, let me compliment that. Let me be a, a harmonious participant in uh, the orchestra. Under the guidance of some conductor and I'll, I play my part in that big orchestra. And then it's very nice. Okay. Anything on the ladies' side? Okay. Thank you very much, Sri the Prabhupada. Ki.